Welcome to Comic Station, issue number 71 for May 7, 2014. I'm actually going to start it off with the statue. This is Rorschach, obviously, from uh, Watchmen. And I have some positive and negative things to say about this one. First, the positive, because I always want to start off on the right foot. Really nice detail on the coat, on the f f fabric. Everything has, the, even the shoes, so down to the shoelace. Everything has really nice details on here. Some of the downsides to it is when you get closer up. The, there is visible glue on the stick here that did come from the manufacturer. Uh, if you, this is, uh, Rorschach is from the base separated from pegs. Mm -hmm. Standard, fairly standard. However, when you pick him up, you will notice it feels like he's either hollow or they used a lesser material inside. He doesn't have the heft that his volume should have. Mm -hmm. uh, the base does feel solid. It's nothing really to the base, though, other than the... Uh, the end is nigh sign. It's doesn't say it's a limited number. Doesn't have anything. Just says little numbers and stuff like that. Nothing really stands out. No, no. It's just it's nice to look at if you want to see it on your shelf. It's really nice yeah. looking. Just once it's you get delicate. up close. Yeah, that's, that's extremely the delicate. It is very delicate. So the first comic we're gonna get to is I like to go with smaller publishers. This is from Comics Tribe, Epic number one. And I wanted to read this one because I do like the superhero comics, especially I want to see something new. And smaller publishers tend to do that. And this is definitely that. Uh, both to its detriment and to its uh, good side for it. But uh, the character, Epic, is a superhuman power. He's kind of like a Superman, but he is a teenager. Kind of middle school, high school, if you're stretching it. Um... He, he's obviously new to the job. He has a little problem where he loses his powers in the presence of attractive women. Not just all women, but it, something about the glands they talk about a little bit. Uh, obviously, a superhero that loses his powers in front of attractive women. There is a lot of, as well as the character is juvenile, the character is juvenile. The plot is kind of, it's a, it's a good plot. But a lot of the humor is juvenile. It's a lot of sophomoric. Yeah, I'm trying to go, <laughs> trying to mention some kind of jokes without mentioning the region that it might be in. And there's I think a, you just there's did. A few of them. <laughs> uh, and there's some strategic uses of some steam and elbows and towels in uh, a locker room scene, stuff like that. It's just very sophomoric. Mm -hmm. uh, juvenile, it, these words just keep popping up in my mind. Uh, it, of course, if you are, it, it looks like it's for kids, but it's definitely not for kids. It's more for the kids in the head, not so much in the heart. Uh, in, uh, and I'm kind of torn about it. I do like the storytelling they use, the plot. They jump around characters' point of views. They go really well into... You get one character, they're talking to another, then it follows them, and it, it kept the plot really moving. It was a very, an easy, nice read. I really enjoyed the flow of it, but at the same time, when they made these jokes and when they had these circumstances, I kind of groaned, and I'm just like... So, mm -hmm. it really depends on your humor. I, I, I liked it, yet kind of ashamed to say I liked it. <laughs> right. Well, for me, uh, I read... The Woods from Boom Studio. Uh, it's a new number one. Um, following along the lines of high school, um, that's basically what this one revolves around. This book opens up, you're getting a lot of uh, internal dialogue um, on different characters in a high school, wandering around in the high school, including the principal, some of the teachers. Different points of view. Yeah, it's mostly the students, you know, basically, oh, you know, one student's thinking, you know, why should I be here, or why didn't I do that, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, goes with the outcasts? It does. It, it focuses yeah. mostly on the outcasts uh, of the school. I mean, you even have one of the students who constantly gets in trouble streaking through. Uh, <laughs> That's just the one cause, I'm laughing about. Just causing trouble. Um, so, these students are all trying to figure out their way through high school, and then all of a sudden, kaboom, something happens, and the whole school is transported to another planet, or moon. They're not quite sure. Um, does it really matter at that point? No, it really doesn't. So as soon as they get there, of course everybody's freaking out. Uh, some of the inhabitants of this world um, kind of find the students tasty. Uh, oh, well, so, that's good. So there's a little bit of a, a, a gore factor there. And then uh, the, the, the head 
geeky kind of guy, kind of has this mental thing with a basically a, an arrow-shaped monolith outside the school where he understands certain things. So he, he gathers up this... Uh, Convenient. Yeah, he gathers up a team and uh, of these five misfits, as it were, and to save themselves and to save them school, to save the school, they have to go through the woods. Hence the title. Hence the title. Well, it's a sci-fi horror. Sci-fi so. horror. It, it was a fun read. I mean, um, you know, did it knock me over? No, but you know what? I, it, it gave me enough where I'd be interested to see where they take it. It's something slightly different. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's original, but it's slightly different. Yeah, so, you know, I, like I said, it it's just... It's it's a step away from you know there's no superheroes at this point and yeah, stepping away you know, from yeah the rest uh, of our, our our normal comic reading so I you know I enjoyed it it was fun yeah as much as I like my superheroes it's I, I do like non superhero comics mm -hmm. unfortunately you get a lot more of them yes we do because I have a pile right here I'm just gonna run through these real quick because honestly a lot of them just deserve a mention. Uh, original Sin number one, we did talk about Original Sin zero. zero. Mm -hmm. The only reason I want to mention this is because it is the number one issue. They're kicking off on the zero. You found out who the Watcher is. You get a little insight on him and now who shot the Watcher. Uh, I really actually did like the artwork and the storyline in this. This is one that uh, I enjoyed it. It is one of eight and it's the next big event in the Marvel Universe. And, of course, Marvel's just pumping them out Picking again. Picking them out. Uh, Cyclops number one. If you care about Cyclops, this one is, he's a, I guess, a young kid, teenager. And he's with his father, Corsair, who's a space pirate. So it's Cyclops in space being a pirate. <laughs> uh, Miles Morales, Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Of course, Amazing Spider-Man is back. And so, of course, they have this and really... If you don't know who Miles Morales is, or you don't know who uh, the Ultimate Spider-Man with that whole timeline, you're going to be thrown off a bit, uh, especially with the ending. And yeah, it's just I, I'm kind of debating between which one I don't care about more. <laughs> so uh, I, if you like them, you're going to like it because. Both of them, the artwork was really nice. Mm -hmm. I thought the storytelling mechanics, the uh, how they told it, it, it's good. But you, both of these kind of, you need a little bit of an investment in the character to begin with. Yeah, and I, I don't know. Most people are don't like Cyclops to begin with, and uh, and Ultimate Spider-Man. If you're into the Ultimate Universe, fine. Yeah. But if you're not, then yeah. Yeah. Again, you need you need some investment to get you into both of those. Absolutely. Well, following on the meh meh. Future's End, the new 52, DC's new big thing. Mm -hmm. um, basically, uh, there's some timeline things going on in this. Isn't uh, there always? Yeah, Batman <laughs> Beyond, you got Firestorm, you got Grifter, there's some aliens, uh, Stormwatch makes a, a, an appearance in this. Uh, you, you know, this is a setup for what's going to be a long-term series. Um, you don't know who the bad guys are yet, but um, a lot of... Uh, you know, second and third rate characters in this um, leading up to the end of this, which I will not spoil, but a better known DC character gets killed at the end of this. Okay. So it does give you that to go on. Um, it's a, it, it, you know, the character well, is, a, is a B character, not a certain not an A list character, but, hmm. you know, but once again, it, it's time travel, it's space, it's Earth, yeah. it's. Aliens and blah, 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 whatever. It's well, if you got uh, issue zero for Free Comic Book Day, uh, that one actually shows a bit of the future and what they're trying to stop. And in that one, you don't see it very much. But there are a lot of A-list characters that are obviously dead. Mm. Um, for better source of the word. And... So it's no wonder that they killed someone off in this first issue, yeah. even if it is a B-list. Yeah, I mean, you know, it wasn't a bad read. Don't don't get me wrong. It, you know, and you know, I hope it goes someplace. Um, Brian Azzarello is usually a pretty good writer, so we'll see. You know, but it it's just I hope they do something with it and not just let it fizzle out and make it a non-event. I yeah, I, I agree. I, I I just don't know where they're going to go with this with all the other stuff that's going on. So I mean, we'll see. You know, yeah, uh, it'll. You know, I'm not sure if this one's a weekly. I know they're kicking out Batman Eternal on a weekly basis, yeah. so this might be a weekly. I can't remember. So, oh well. Um, of course, if you want some more uh, 
reviews and you, in the more written form, you can go to FrontDoorsGamer.com where Lido has a number of reviews up. Some of the notable ones is for Chaos, which he actually had a surprisingly positive review for that comic book, which makes me want to read it just to see what he liked about it, as well as uh, Nailbiter number one. Uh, I think this one image. And uh, that one's been getting some press because one, it's image and it's a uh, kind of horror mm -hmm. book. So uh, go check out FrontTowardsGamer.com. Check out some of the written reviews, not just number ones on there. He, Lito does a number of uh, follow-ups on some later issues. And Xenoscope has their next big event coming up, and they're almost up to 100 issue, and he reviewed issue number 97, I believe, just came out. And it's all leading up towards issue 100. So mm -hmm. if you like the Xenoscope, the Grim Fairy T Tales universe, definitely go check out that review. Thank you very much. This has been issue number 71 for May 7, 2014. Thanks for joining us again every week. Try to go over more number one issues than... I know some people are asking why don't we follow up and why don't we read some other issues, but we like to do number ones, get people an idea if they should pick it up or not. Mm -hmm. And honestly, there's so many number ones out there, you kind of need something to filter it. Absolutely. Especially with Marvel lately. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, and we will see you next week. Take care.